वेलकम टू वी लर्न वर्चुअल लर्निंग नेटवर्क दिस इज सेशन नंबर फोर्टीन बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट एंड एग्जाम पॉलिसी द टॉपिक्स विच वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन दिस सेशन आर इंट्रोडक्शन कंसेप्ट ऑफ बैलेंस ऑफ ट्रेड दैट इज बी ओ टी एंड बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट्स बी ओ पी ट्रेंड्स इन इंडियाज बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट्स causes of pop defects measures adopted to solve the problem concept of the rate of exchange mechanism of exchange rate determination export import policy 1997 to 2002 role of exim bank coming towards the introduction trade is only one aspect of international economic transaction a constant flow of men material and capital take place between nation this flows this flow involves both payment and receipt of foreign exchange a nation need to keep a systematic record of these transactions so the very first topic is concepts of balance of trade and balance of payment balance of payment is a systematic record of all international economic transaction visible and invisible of the country during a given period usually an year bop statement is a device by recording all the economic transaction within a given period between the resistance of a country and the residents of the other countries now the current accounts and the capital accounts bop can analyze by uh, bop analysis can be done in terms of its two major subdivisions these are current accounts and number 2 is capital account so coming towards the current account the current account of bop can be divided into the two parts these are balance of trade and balance of trade in services so coming towards the balance of trade that is bot it deals only with the export and import of merchandise the net balance in the bot will be shown the monetary value of the difference of exports and imports of the country so there are three types of net bot that can be visualized number 1 the fits of bot these will occurs when exports are less than imports surplus in bot's these will occur when exports are greater than imports and balance of bot this will occur when export is equals to import now coming towards the balance of trade and service that is bos this shows the net recipient on account of trade and services we can broadly classify in invis- uh, invisible into five groups these are services such as banking insurance shipping civil aviation royalty consultancy service postal service etc second is investment income which includes profits and dividends on direct portfolio and other investment as well as interest charges on bilateral and multilateral loans third is travel both business and tourist fourth is government transfer and fifth is private transfer all of these transaction are two way transactions that is during any year these services would be provided by indias to the rest of the world and foreigners would be providing these services to india now the balance on current account is the sum or aggregate of bot that is balance of trade and bos that is balance of trade and services so this is balance on current account is equals to bot plus bos 
Now coming towards the capital account. The capital account of the BOP presents transfer of money and other capital items and changes in the country's foreign assets and liabilities resulting from the transaction in the current account. Balance of payments. This is the term balance of payment is the sum of aggregate of its current account and capital account as we have studied earlier. Current account and the capital account will always move in the opposite direction. The BOP account provides a link between increase in gross external debit and the input and spending decisions of the economy. Thus, increase in gross internal debit is equals to current account defect minus direct and long term portfolio capital inflow plus official reserve increases plus other private capital outflow. Now coming towards the next topic that is trends in India's balance of payment. The whole period covering nearly the four and a half decades can be divided into four sub periods depending upon the nature of BOP problem the overall macroeconomic environment, the external aid situation. So the four sub periods are as follows. Period 1 that is up to 1975-1976. The entire period was very difficult for India's BOP. Partially because of slow growth of exports in relation to import requirement and partly because of adverse external factors. Despite tight import control and foreign exchange regulations, the current account defects was 1.8% of the GDPs. The second period is from 1976-77 to 1979-80. The few years stand out of the golden years of India's BOP. India had a small current account surplus and foreign exchange reserve equivalent to about 7 months import. Export growth was good but the primary reason for sharp improvement in BOP was the dramatic improvement in net visibles. The third period is from 1980-81 to 1989-90. The period broadly corresponds to the period of the 6th plan and the 7th plan. The 6th plan was launched when the economy was faced with some BOP difficulties. The last plan is period 4. That is from 1990 to 91 onwards. The BOP crisis reached its climax during 1990. The current account deflate reached a maximum of 3.26% of GDP. India was faced with a serious BOP crisis. In this view, the comprehensive strategy to deal with it was put in place. Although the BOP continued to be under pressure during 92-93, there was a distinct improvement compared to the crisis situation prevailing in the middle 1990s. Since then the BOP situation has continued to register improvement though we have not come out of their shadows completely. Next are the causes of BOP defects. The causes which are responsible for the defects are balance of trade defects, declining surplus on account of invisibles, mounting burden or external debit servicing, dim prospects of giving, concent uh, concentrational aid.
Now coming towards the balance of trade. The first and the foremost cause, cause of balance of payment defect in India has been the trade defect that India has to encounter right since the beginning of the growth process. The import needs of the economy went on increasing without a corresponding increase in exports resulting in mounting trade defects. Even in more recent times, there is sufficient evidence to indicate that the import intensity of Indian industry is rising under pressure of global competition and with search of advanced technology, this trend is certain to continue. Next is declining surplus on account of invisible. A marked feature of India's BOP has been that it has been earning a net surplus on account of trade in invisible. A large earning on account of invisibles have been due to remittance from Indian worker abroad and surplus earning on travel surfaces. In the long run, the net position on invisible would depend on outcome of two opposing sets of forces, one being the surplus earning on the travel services, government transfer and private transfer, and the other being the defects on the investment income. The third one is mountain burden of external debit services. Another factor behind the increasing pressure on the BOP has been steadily mounting burden of external debit servicing. This is estimated to have increased from 7.6 billion in 1989-90 to 10.5 million dollars in 1994 and 95. The last responsible factor for defects is dim prospect of getting concessional aid. During the earlier course of economic development, current account defects could easily be funded by concessional aid both from bilateral and multilateral sources. But towards the end of 80s, the various sources of concessional assistance were drying up whereas the current account defects were mounting up. Next are the measures adapted to solve the problem. From the point of view of the measures adopted by government to solve the problem of BOP defects, the whole period since 1950-51 can be divided into the two parts. Till 1991, BOP defects were sought to be controlled by measures like promoting growth of import substitution industries putting physical restrictions on imports, extending assistance of, for export promotion, providing incentives for increasing foreign exchange earnings on account of invisibles. Since 1991, India has put in practice a comprehensive strategy to overcome BOP defects. The main elements of the strategies are fiscal and monetary discipline, exchange rate policy and foreign trade policy reforms, structural reforms, mobilization of expectational financing. Next are the concepts of the rate of exchange. The bands dealing in foreign exchange and provide, providing facilities for conversation of one currency into another and vice versa are known as authorized dealers of foreign exchange. Bank is said to be busy or sell foreign exchange when it handles the claim drawn in foreign currency or the actual legal tender money that is foreign currency notes and coin of other country. Next coming towards foreign exchange rates. Dealing in the foreign exchange market are carried out at specified rates of exchange. 
when an exchange dealer sells to a customer or buy from him foreign exchange in any form or a draft expressed in foreign currency he quotes a rate of exchange on the basis of which the price of the instrument in the home currency is calculated next is current rate and par of exchange the price of the commodity in the market changes from day to day or from hour to hour these fluctuations are caused by short term factors of demand and supply but these moments are not just accidental or unpredictable but they take place around certain definable norms and the prices trend to return to the normal the price around which the market price fluctuate is called as the normal price it is the same with the price of a currency in the exchange market the current rate of exchange between two currencies fluctuate from day to day due to changes in demand and supply but these fluctuations take place around a rate which may be called as normal rate the true rate or the par of exchange the normal rate of the parity is determined by forces that are of different nature from those influencing the current rate the monetary system prevailing in the two countries whose currencies are involved in the rate of exchange and has a major effect on the factors that determine the parity of exchange now coming towards the mechanism of exchange rate in the exchange market the price of one currency in terms of another currency is quoted as so many units of the second currency for a unit of the first or the other way round this price however is not always the same in a foreign exchange market the rate of exchange like any other price is determined by operation of certain forces next is demand and supply the market price of a commodity is determined by the forces of demand and supply when there is an increase in demand of the foreign currency without a change in its supply its price in terms of the home currency raises the demand for currency on trade account industries on account of the following factors number 1 the residents of the country have ex ported goods to other nations for which they have to receive payments the shipping banking and insurance companies of the country render service to other countries for which they receive remuneration entrepreneur setting up business abroad and supply technical personnel and managers receive profits and salaries tourists and students coming from abroad spending money in the country now coming towards the factor which are responsible for supply of currency against a demand for foreign currency are import from other countries use of services by foreign shipping banking insurance and other services for which payments are to be made payments made as salary and profit to foreigners not staying in the same country respondents of the country going as tourist abroad and for higher education in foreign universities and institutions spends more money next is the exchange rate determination of india exchange rate of indian rupee has been left free to be determined by the market forces of demand and supply the reserve bank of india can occasionally does intervene in the market in support of indian rupee 
If a large inflow of dollar takes place at any time in the Indian foreign exchange market, Indian rupee would tend to be appreciated. An appreciation of the rupee works as a disadvantage of India's export. Exports may suffer a setback. To prevent this from happening, the RBI may purchase dollar in the market. Rest we will cover in next session. Thank you. Happy learning. We learning.